everybody. Uh, welcome back. We're going to just cover a few of my end of course thoughts and reflections here in my very last video for YouTube for Educators. Uh, talk about a couple of the things I learned this semester, some of the stuff that I thought was useful and how it connected to uh, some of the standards that we need to cover with this course. So we'll go ahead and get started at the top with the most important things that I learned. Um, you know, first and foremost, I think probably the most important thing I did and realized was just how much commitment it takes to really have a high quality channel. You know, I kind of had started off just kind of getting my feet wet with YouTube as far as using it in class and posting screencasts and things like that. But by the last project that I did for this course, I really figured out that um, you really get out what you put in and I put a lot more time and effort into that last project and I felt much better about how it came out. Uh, and I think that the people who actually watch it will probably feel like they got a lot more out of it too. You know, hopefully more people will watch that because I put a little bit more time and effort in. Um, another thing I realized that was really useful was that if I'm gonna make material for YouTube, then in a lot of cases YouTube's tools are the best ways to go about uh, doing that whole process. Now I, I did a lot of work in iMovie this semester, I uh, did some in Camtasia, and what I really realized was that some of the built-in uploaders and the other things that integrate with YouTube don't always work quite as well as YouTube's own tools. Uh, I've realized that the best way to upload your video so that it doesn't end up looking low res or looking like it just doesn't look right uh, is to use YouTube's uploader. So that's what I'll be doing from now on. And then probably the final thing that I realized that was really helpful was that detailed planning is really, really important to create a well-produced video. Now, I kind of knew that in a cursory way, and I've even uh, explained that to my students who do video projects, but uh, it really took just doing a lot of these projects myself before I realized just how important it is to have a detailed plan and how uh, detailed planning can even get you excited about the actual creation process. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is whether my opinion of YouTube and education has changed or remained the same. And I gotta say, it's pretty much remained the same, but I've been pretty bullish on YouTube for education to begin with. Uh, one of the reasons I love being in education is because of all the ways that technology can, uh, all the ways that technology still has opportunities to get in, make inroads into the education system and really change the way we do things. Uh, you know, YouTube is a really important tool for some of the newer ideas that, that we're all kind of pushing, like differentiated instruction, um, flexible pacing, uh, new ways of engaging students. So YouTube really, really is a big deal for those kinds of things. Um, okay, so how was my teaching, or my thoughts about teaching, impacted by what I learned or experienced this semester? So I, before I started this semester, I was already creating videos for YouTube. Most of those videos are still available on my channel, and so people will really be able to see kind of how I've evolved over the course of the semester. But the main takeaway for me as far as what I got out of the semester was the drive to create more videos and to make them higher quality. And um, just kind of looking at the last videos that I did at the end of the semester, I feel like I've started to hit on that quality thing, but uh, at this point I'm limited really by equipment and uh, settings. So I think I'm going to try and make a, few, a little bit, bit more use of the video equipment in the video studio at my school if I really need to make more videos that involve anything other than a screencast. A screencast is pretty straightforward and because I'm the audio teacher I have access to all the audio materials that I'll need. But for video I think I'm gonna have to talk to the video teacher to really uh, get in there and make that really high quality stuff. And then maybe someday I'll invest in uh, something for making higher quality videos for my personal uh, channel like maybe a, a higher quality camera for home. Uh, okay, next up. Did I use the project skills or ideas in the course in my teaching? Well, I was doing that already. I was already using a lot of these uh, ideas in my teaching, but there's some stuff in here that uh, I've either made more use of or that I've just used in different ways. Uh, I've done a lot more screencasts in the past semester, and this is something I hope to continue doing. I've even done screencasts during class where I've recorded the uh, video of what I was doing in class and the audio of what I was doing in class so the kids could watch it later and review. Um, I've also used videos to answer frequently asked questions that students have. So this is another thing where um, if there's something that I'm answering for students all the time or I'm having to kind of repeat the same things for them, and this goes for uh, complex or frequent processes too, things that they're doing over and over and over, then screencasts are really great for that. And uh, videos even, depending on what kind of process it is, 
might be really great for that too, but if I post them on YouTube, then they're always available. The kids can look at them anytime they want. So the last thing I want to make sure I talk about in this video is how some of the projects that I worked on connect to the standards that we needed to make sure we covered over this course. So this course connects to the AECT standards for um, educational technologists and specialists. And I chose to focus on three projects, my interactive video and storyboard, my PowerPoint movie, and my playlist lessons. And then I connected each one to one standard. Now, um, each of these projects connects to a whole bunch of different standards, but I chose one to focus on because I thought that um, you know, there are really a lot of ways that these projects connect to standards, and I don't want to uh, make a video that's too long, but uh, there are a few that I thought were extremely you know, poignant, so I wanted to talk about those. Now, the most recent project that I did, the interactive video, the one that I'm really feeling kind of more proud about, involves working on a storyboard. And the storyboard uh, meets the standard 2.1 for print technologies. Now, um, that's really interesting because I didn't actually print anything out for this project, but what I did do was create a digital version of something that would be considered print media. And I did it in kind of interesting ways. So we had the opportunity to do a storyboard where I was writing um, captions to go along with screen caps from my video, but I also created a diagram that I, that I felt really good about. And that diagram was really an awesome way to kind of do a mixed media print um, deliverable, right? So the, um, what I delivered had text on it, it had images on it, it had connections connecting one thing to another. Um, it's a digital version of something that's print media, includes verbal text, but it also includes visual material and graphics. And it's useful as a supporting document for planning, but it's also useful on its own as a descriptive work. So really hits kind of all the bases there, and I, I thought that was a great example of print technologies, which you don't usually see in a course like this that's all digital. The next project I looked at was my PowerPoint movie, another one that I felt really good about. Now, I've done a lot of screencasts before, but I don't usually get a chance to use uh, presentation software like PowerPoint, Prezi, Keynote. Um, and in this one, I chose to focus on the audiovisual technologies strand. Now, um, PowerPoint's a really interesting technology because it has that print-like media feel to it, but really it is an audiovisual technology because they almost always, PowerPoint presentations almost always come along with uh, some sort of audio track uh, and maybe even a visual media um, in the form of video or something like that. Uh, now those materials uh, in terms of PowerPoint movies are produced and delivered using electronic devices, so they're not just print media. And the messages that they deliver are both auditory and visual. So we're, um, we're getting really into a multimedia thing, so you get that audio-visual technology kind of mix. Uh, and what's interesting about PowerPoint and what makes it kind of a good fit for audio-visual technologies is that it's still a linear medium. So yes, you're using technology, and yes, you're mixing media, but at the same time, you are, um, you're still kind of in that realm of linear, uh, one-thing-at-a-time media and you're not really getting your feet wet into the world of hyperlinking in the web, which is kind of where we're going next. So speaking of hyperlinks, um, the last project that I took a look at was my playlist lesson, one of the earlier projects in this semester. And the strand that I looked at for that one was 2.4, Integrated Technologies. So in terms of the playlist lesson, you've got several videos uh, playing one after another, but you're linking them together using YouTube's playlist uh, features. And so what you're integrating that you wouldn't have otherwise is things like learner control. So the learner is able to move back and forth in the playlist. It's interactive, and they can um, go to whichever point they want to learn the thing that they want to learn. Uh, and then the other thing that playlist lesson has for you is multiple media working together. So you've got video, your audiovisual media, but you've also got hyperlinks and text and things like that so that you can mix multiple media together and connect multiple pieces of media to each other. So that's my reflection for the end of the year, some thoughts about uh, what I worked on and how it connects to standards and kind of where I was going at the end of the course. So I felt really positive about how this course went, and um, I feel like I got out of it what I wanted to get out of it. So it was a great experience. Thanks, and good luck to everybody.